Ben, we've already heard much about the Adelaide doctor who's played a vital role in this rescue, but today he's received high praise there. Yeah, Brenton, I was at a press conference with the governor who's been running this rescue operation this afternoon, and I took the chance to ask him about Dr Richard Harris. As we know, he has been crucial uh, throughout this rescue operation. He was called in for both his uh, medical background and also his cave diving experience. We knew that uh, he was doing a big job, but we hadn't heard straight from the horse's mouth in terms of uh, exactly what he was doing. So I took the opportunity to ask uh, the governor. Here's what he said. How crucial have the Australians been? Yeah, big help. Especially the doctor. Dr. Harris? Yeah. Dr. Richard okay. Harris? Yeah. How good has he been? Uh, they're good. Okay. The best, not good. Just the best. Very best. Now, as we speak, we have no doubt that Dr. Richard Harris is playing a key role in the final stages of that final rescue operation, the third phase that we hope will see the five members of the Wild Boar soccer team brought out and brought here to hospital. And we might possibly have a development coming soon because this road behind me is now being blocked off by police. Now, you might remember that when that happened yesterday, a short time later, we started to see the ambulances arrive. So that is potentially a good sign that something is about to happen. And for the very latest on the rescue mission, we go live to Ben Avery. Ben, have there been any developments there? There is one major development, Kate. There are reports that at least one ambulance is now leaving the cave side. And as I said earlier in the bulletin, this road to the hospital has now been blocked off by police in the last two days when that happened. We did see ambulances arrive a short time later, so we are potentially seeing the conclusion of what has been a 17-day ordeal, a major rescue operation that involved people from right around the world, including in South Australia. It would be a tremendous result if the people involved in that soccer team, those 13 people, 12 players aged between 11 and 16, and the 25-year-old coach, will all make it out of that cave alive and well. Certainly, the that are in the hospital at the moment are doing well, they're recovering well, they're in good health. We're told that they do not have uh, life-threatening injuries. A couple of them have lung infections, uh, they're not being allowed to uh, speak with their parents at the moment, uh, they have to do so behind uh, a glass kind of wall so that uh, there can't be any spread of infection. But as I say, no serious injuries that have been found at this stage. We're now waiting here to see whether or not this ambulance uh, does arrive and whether or not we have seen at least one more boy come out of that cave. And I can tell you, uh, Brenton and Kate, that this isn't the only camera that is watching this situation. There are uh, probably around 50 here at the moment. There's plenty more up at the cave side as well. The world is certainly watching uh, this moment. It is truly phenomenal. Ben Avery, thank you. The international focus tonight is on Chiang Rai Hospital. Nine's Ben Avery is there. Ben, has the full soccer team now been reunited at the hospital? Well, look, Pete, we don't know for sure, but what I can tell you is there's been a lot of activity here in the last hour, hour and a half. We've had uh, two ambulances race past, both with a police guard. We've had two helicopters in the air. Uh, we understand that one may have been carrying one of the boys, the other may have been carrying two of them, so uh, three in, perhaps the other two not here yet. Uh, perhaps they are, but if they're not, as I'm saying, we do believe that it can't be too far away. A lot of activity here at the moment. The road's been blocked off leading into the hospital. Media's been pushed back and, gee, are there some cameras here at the moment? There's probably uh, 50, 60 cameras on top of all of the media that will be where uh, Alice is at the moment. So all eyes of the world are on this story at the moment and what a great outcome it really was. As we know, that uh, there were eight boys in the hospital already as of yesterday, four rescued yesterday, four rescued the day before on Sunday. We heard there from Alice about how there's a number of conditions on them in hospital at the moment. They've got their own separate ward. Uh, we heard they're not able to watch TV at the moment. If they did uh, have the chance to watch TV, which may happen in the next few days, not surprisingly, the soccer team wants to watch the World Cup. So hopefully they will get the chance to do that when they are all reunited here in the coming hours, if they haven't been already. But uh, there are a few uh, ailments uh, among the boys. We're told that uh, a couple of them have uh, a minor lung infection. Uh, there's a, a number of other uh, uh, minor ailments, but we do understand no life-threatening injuries, and they are all expected to make a full recovery, which really, after 17 days for some of them, inside that dark cave is quite incredible. We heard from Alice there as well about how they're in darkness for that 17 days and as they came out, the light are damaging to their eyes. So all getting around with sunglasses on at the moment, uh, that might continue for some time. And, of course, we hope 
that at some stage in the next few days they'll be able to hug mum and dad again because at this stage uh, they haven't been able to do that. They're talking uh, with that glass screen in between. Uh, first, some uh, blood test results need to go to Bangkok. That's already happened. They should come back in the next day or so. Once they're cleared of any serious infection, then they'll be able to get that hug from mum and dad. So a lot to look forward to after what's been quite an ordeal, Pete, over the past 17 days. Yes, indeed, Ben. Thank you very much for your reporting and that hug. I'm sure those parents and those young boys, that's all they want is to hug each other and to talk to each other. Thank you, Ben. What great news for us to say good night on. The rescue mission complete, all 13 safe. The Today Show is on air at 5am. I'm Peter Overton on behalf of everyone in the Nine Newsroom. Good night. The Nine News app is here. When news happens near you, we'll alert you. The free Nine News app. Go straight to the source you trust. Monaco, playground of the global elite. We have breaking news from Thailand. The 12 soccer players whose incredible cave rescue gripped the world have just been discharged from hospital. The whole team had been quarantined there ever since they were rescued. Some members had been there for over a week. And I've got to say, some of them all pretty relaxed, wearing their uniforms, one wearing a Manchester United backpack. All this attention must be overwhelming for them, but they are handling it with maturity of people much older than they are. So from the hospital, they will be heading not too far away to a press conference where Nine's Ben Avery joins us now. Ben, good evening to you. How's this all going to unfold? I understand the uh, questions had to be submitted in advance. Well, I can tell you, Pete, a lot of movement here in the last five minutes or so. And as you can imagine, a lot of cameras here as well. The world's media here waiting for this press conference, which we believe is now only around 40 minutes away. Those boys, we believe, will be brought here to this administration centre that has been decked out in advance for this media conference. You touched on it there in the uh, throw to me that uh, we had to submit our questions in advance yesterday. We uh, forwarded those on to Thai authorities. They were going to be then sent to psychologists so they could check them over uh, before then passing them on to a moderator. And we understand that that moderator will ask the questions on behalf of uh, the world's media here this evening. So a significant moment for the boys tonight. They are now out of hospital after this media conference, which we expect will uh, go for some time, obviously as I say, a lot of questions for these boys. Uh, but then they'll be able to go home, uh, presumably with mum and dad, something they've been waiting to do now for around 25 days. It was June 23 uh, that they became stuck in that Tam Luan cave. They were there for 10 days before they were even found. Uh, it was another seven days before they were rescued. And as we know, another seven or eight days in hospital. So just amazing that they've been able to get to this point. It'll be interesting to see how they look, how they sound. But we'll certainly bring you that uh, when this press conference begins, as I say, in around 40 minutes time. Yeah, it really is a rescue that has captivated the world. Now the world waits to hear what the kids have got to say. Ben, thank you. The brave Wild Boars soccer team have recalled the magical moment they heard divers coming to free them from a Thai cave. Out of hospital, fit and healthy, they've also admitted feeling guilty over the rescuer who died trying to save them. Introducing Thailand's lucky 13, the Wild Boars. Dressed in their uniforms, soccer balls in hand, the most famous football team on the globe heads to the stage. One by one, beginning with the coach, they present themselves to the world. My nickname is Tun, this boy says. I play left and right forward. It's just kilometres and yet a world away from inside the Tam Lawan cave. The boys describing as a miracle the moment two British divers emerge from the darkness. How many of you? Brilliant. He loves it. Everyone was so happy when they heard the noise of the divers, this boy said. It was the first noise from outside we'd heard in 10 days. They spoke of how they took turns trying to dig their way out, surviving off water from rock formations. I felt dizzy due to my hunger. I stopped thinking about food because it would make me even hungrier. Beside them on stage, as they were in the cave, the Thai Navy SEALs. The men who'd given them their clothes, who'd played games with them to pass the time. They became family. I call him dad and he calls me son. Beneath the joy though, guilt over rescuer Samam Kunan who died trying to save them. We feel really sorry, he was very brave. An hour earlier, the boys were released from hospital. A guard of honour, a barrage of hugs. The boys clearly overwhelmed by the occasion. 
one of them tearing up as he thanked medical staff. They left the hospital into waiting cars, back into a world desperate to hear their story. Well, this is a major moment for these boys. They're screaming, there's cheering, there's waving. It really is a hero's welcome. But there are concerns about what's going to happen uh, in the weeks, months and years to come. How will the boys cope when the hype has died down? For now, that's little concern to their families. These boys are finally home. Soon, it will be back to school. Staff and students preparing a welcoming party for when the boys return. And we do worry that they, they will be safe or not, but now we heard that they, they are safe, we are very happy. Do you think the boys will be famous among all the other students when they come back? Uh, we don't want them to come back as heroes, says the deputy principal. We want them to come back as normal students. There may be little chance of that. In Chiang Rai, Ben Avery, Nine News.